Hello! It's time! It's time! Actually, I just need to adjust this a little bit. Being comfortable is very difficult for me, okay? Ironclad. I'm seeing some letters. Sorry, I was trying to type hello. Hello then, and welcome. About to get started. How are you doing on this fine day? Hello again. We can remove a card from your deck, obtain a random common relic, take 18 damage for 250 gold, or boss swap. Our boss will be the guardian. We can fight a maximum of three elites. In order to do that, we have to fight this one. And if it goes poorly, we can always dodge the third elite, I guess, if we uh, head over this way. And then we can get some extra resting in upgrades before the guardian. A poop, satyr poop. But what does it mean? I need to put my phone in a place where I can actually read it without having to interrupt myself too much. I have an idea for how to do this. Okay, so is there an early shop before an elite fight that we can use all this gold on? There is not. So taking 18 damage for it might be a little bit questionable. The first shop would be up here or here or here, all of which have no more elites after them. So I think this gold for shop is a little Gold for damage is a little bit questionable. We might be dying to elites that we want to fight. Alternatively, we can obtain a random common relic, which I think is pretty good. As long as we don't get the boot. Let's see what relic we get and then decide. We got a bag of marbles. At the start of each turn, apply one vulnerable to all enemies. You know, it's okay. This will help us versus, um, this will help us versus gremlin knob. So our attacks on the first turn do a little more damage. So help us, this will also maybe be useful against sentries because it will cancel out all of their artifact charges. Boot is OP? No. Boot is definitely not OP. So I'm sorry to disinform you of that, but I cannot allow such slander. Okay, to allow ourselves to go for three elites, we should not take this path on the left over here. Not that the question marks are so bad, but... Um... I don't know, two elites with no west sites before that. Also, a lot of question marks, so we might not get the cards for them. It's a little bit questionable. Alternatively, we would like to like maybe path over. Well, the spicy elite comes with two advanced hallways before it. So that is probably a death trap, like these three fights. 
Um. You're slander? I am slander man. Okay. Sounds about right. I actually like the idea of taking a question mark and then, or taking this question mark, then maybe deciding whether we want to go here, here, or here. Generally, I like to avoid advanced hallways, so I might just go up this way. Fortunately, we drew a lot of blocks. So we have no more blocks for turn two and we're getting hit for six. If we had drawn the attacks on turn one, they also would have done more damage because we had vulnerable on turn one. So we really drew our cards in the wrong order here. It's one damage off lethal. No, we take even more damage. This is so sad. 18 gold, a choice between cleave, searing blow, and rage. Is this our searing blow deck? I don't know if we're going to get very many upgrades on it. We could upgrade it here, here, and here. Hmm. Not sure about the searing blow in this path. Not that Searing Blow is that bad, but I'd really like to get it upgraded before I do the hard stuff, not like after, you know? We can consider Cleave. Cleave can be really helpful in the multiple enemy attacks. I'm usually okay with taking one Cleave early on. Rage is also pretty good. Gain some block for zero energy. I think we take the cleave here though. Okay, we have a bag of marbles putting in some work. Although, hmm. If we double defend here, we take uh, eight damage. And if we strike, strike, defend, we take only six seven damage, so we should do that, I guess. But still, we're taking a lot of damage really early on. And we're taking even more damage now. Should we bash it and go for lethal next turn? Probably, we're not weak. All right. 20 gold, a strength potion, which will be very useful. And a choice between second wind, perfected strike, and clash. Um, we could go for a perfected strike. It's not the worst idea. It currently deals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, 6, so it deals 18. Um, also, this is our second hallway fight, and this will be our third, so we're definitely going to take the two question marks here. Um, are we going to die to this path, though? We have a strength pot. I think that if we take the perfected strike, we'll be okay. Maybe we can even add more some more strikes to our deck in the next hallway fight. It is a little bit risky, but... We have a potion. We have two events that maybe could help. Although we can't spend our HP at these events very safely at all. If they are like the shining light that upgrades two cards, I'm gonna be a little worried. I might divert up here and take to take the event, but there could be some really strong events that could help us. So we'll see how we'll see how it goes. Like this one, we can transform a card. It's a shrine. Hooray! And we should consider not transforming a strike because we have perfected strike. Um, hmm. Transforming a defend is extremely questionable given that we added two attacks. Yeah, we have to transform a strike. There's really no other option here. It's just too bad that our perfected strike is worse now. 
Okay, we got a sword boomerang. That probably was a downgrade, to be honest. Because we lost a strike for perfected strike. Oh no, another hallway fight. Oh no. These things have a lot more HP than usual too, so we can't just kill them. It's at 25, right? And this is 12 and 9. Which is only 21. Sad. Can put this guy to 6 so he dies to a single strike next turn. Eighteen gold, another strength potion. Alrighty. The choice between Sentinel, Headbutt, and Berserk. Do we want a Berserk in our deck? Ah. Uh... It costs us one card and two turns of vulnerable. So that we can gain one energy in the future on all future turns. Hmm. I must say, it is not looking super good. It's going to be unplayable most of the time. We have Advanced Hallway Elite, Advanced Hallway Elite. Gosh. Berserk is not going to be that good in any of those fights. In fact, I think it's going to be bad. The only fight that would be good in is Legavalon. How good is it versus Legavalon? Quite good, actually. Because then we get to have a 4 energy deck. Um, and the other fights, we just don't play it. Sentinel, Headbutt. How good is Headbutt? I mean, like not really that good, right? I don't know. It might be better than skipping. But what about the Berserk? We can upgrade the Berserk at some point and it's kind of playable. Should I take Berserk? Maybe I'll try it. So we become vulnerable next turn, but we gain an extra mana next turn. That's good, because he's not attacking us. can interrupt it. So we dodge that big attack. Now we just have two um, spike slimes to deal with. Uh, 16. Now we can't kill that guy unless we got... No, we just can't kill it. Um, but we should play this anyway, probably to see where they land. Oh wait, actually we can kill it because... Um, Two of them landed here, and we have four energy. Beautiful. Um, now if we do bash, cleave, this is, should be enough damage. Wow, Berserk actually saved us HP in this fight. We took no damage in an advanced hallway fight and heal for six. Incredible. Although we did get lucky with the turn one not getting attacked, because otherwise it would not have been a good card. A colorless potion versus a strength potion? Usually I'm not a huge fan of colorless potion. Probably should just stick with the strength potion, especially because we have a sword boomerang. Choice between rage, clothesline, and anger? Ooh, this is a tough choice. I love anger and clothesline. 
Getting some weakness in there would be super good, especially going into the elites. Um, although it's anger. Yeah, I guess we take clothesline, because weakness is really good. Alright, let's use one strength potion at least here. And should we use the other one as well? Um, we can save it for knob maybe. Maybe we should just use it. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll get some extra card rewards for the next elite. It's probably more useful just to use it now. Not exactly sure. Alright, so we hit this guy twice and we hit this guy once. It's not bad at all. Um, we should probably be playing our strength, our attacks, since we gained so much strength. And we can defend once. Um, we should try to kill this guy. Which means we need to play all of our energy in order to do that, unfortunately. But it still must be done. Yeah, Berserk is not going to be so good. Because we're barely even going to be able to use the energy when there's so much dazed in our deck. Hmm. Oh, we... Wait. Dang, not quite. So close. I would have saved life if I had striked this guy instead of that guy, because he was weakened last turn. And uh, he would have died from the cleave this turn. So, it's hard for me. Maybe I could have even predicted that if I looked at my cards. Oh, we're taking even more damage! Where's our block cards? Alright. Oddly smooth stone. We start each combat with one dexterity. Not bad at all. Choice between Iron Wave, Warcry, and Metallicize. Metallicize is good versus Legavalon. Iron Wave is good versus Gremlin Knob. So who are we going to face? The Gavilan or Gremlin Knob? Who are we more scared of? Well, that is the question, isn't it? Iron Wave is pretty good in both. Metallicize. I don't know. Metallicize is actually qu quite good versus um, the Gavilan. Quite bad versus Knob. Uh... We don't really need it versus, well, it's like 5 life versus Knob, and it's like a lot more than that versus Magavalon. So I guess we take the Metallicize. It's also good versus Guardian, which we'll be fighting. Get some block every turn. Ooh, please cleave turn one. Oh no. It's the slimes. This is not looking good, friends. If I had cleave turn one, we could kill them all because they're all vulnerable. Alright, either Metallicize or Defend. Metallicize pays off if we need it to use three turns of def blocking, but Defend pays off because we might already have enough block next turn, but that's unlikely. Pretty darn unlikely, right? Yeah. Okay.
think I'm dead. How am I gonna survive this elite now? Frickin' slimes. We're at 22 HP now. Just shrug it off. There's no way we beat Gremlin Knob with this deck. We have to hope it's Legavalin, I think. And even then, it's like really, really rough. Please, no Gremlin Knob! Okay, it's Legavalin. Which is good. Because now we can Berserk. And there's some hope, maybe? Wake it up next turn with Clothesline, ideally. Don't have Metallicize in play, but... Could also double strike right now. Nah. Okay, Perfected Strike. Metallicize. Cleave. Okay, so we have four energy and three block every turn. Is that gonna be enough? I don't think so. I mean, we close line, so. We take six. Okay. Uh, we can bash. Defend. Okay, so we are at... Um, we can take 9 more damage or we can cleave while he's vulnerable. I mean, yeah, so it's 6 life or 12 damage. Next turn we have a pretty good hit, so I think we can aff- wait, wait, how am I okay? Next turn we have Perfected Strike, which deals... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 16. Okay, so that's gonna be dealing 24. And say we do 2 strikes. So 24 and 18, 34, 42. Then we need to deal 13 damage while we are minus two strength with four energy. I think we can do it. I think we can do that. Which means I'm gonna go for the life here. Yeah! Alright. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I don't... We, we, we definitely did not play this act correctly so far, I think. I think we've just kind of got lucky that we uh, dodged Knob. The Legavalin was kind of a free fight for us. Because we took... Because we took the Berserk... We were kind of dead if we didn't fight the Gavilan. Well, Sentries wasn't... No, Sentries was pretty bad, but we got unlucky, I think. I think we got pretty darn unlucky versus Sentries. Like, we used two Strength Pots. And then we couldn't draw any block. Hmm. Yeah. But now we're alive, and we can probably stay alive, I think. We don't need any of this stuff, right? Let's go to this chest. Well, yeah, if we don't want to fight an elite immediately afterward, we should go to this chest. And I think we're still dead to knob, right? So we should definitely not be going for an elite. Yeah, that makes sense. Twenty-four gold, a pendant, which is every tenth attack you play deals double damage. Sure. 
dude close. Yes, that was indeed close. I agree. Alrighty. We have a shop. There is preserved insect which says enemies in elite combats have 25% less HP. Pretty good. There's also a frozen eye which says when viewing your drop pile the cards are now shown in order. I think it's a little early for frozen eye. But I could be wrong. Pummel Strike would make our Perfected Strike deal more damage. Shrug it off is on sale for 24 gold. And we are fighting um, Guardian, which Shrug it off is very good verse. We also have a lot of upgrades coming up. What are we going to be upgrading? Definitely the Berserk. Probably the Clothesline too. Alright, so preserved insect or frozen eye? What else, what's it gonna be? Hi Maisie, welcome. I do like this preserved insect a lot actually. I think that will save us a lot of HP in all the X in the future. And elite combats are, are important to take. And if we have this preserved insect, we can go for the hard elite paths and feel more safe about it. Insects are horrible, but not in this case. Yeah, I think in this case, the insect is really saving us a lot of um, making the elite fights much smoother. And I'll purchase a strike it off for 24 gold because it's on sale. And I will not remove a strike because I have a perfected strike. Oh, well, I could remove the perfected strike. <laughs> Let's save our gold, I guess. Uh, what about potions? Potions. Um, we have two advanced hallways. I don't think we will die. We can even rest in one of them if we're scared. There's no way we're taking 22 damage from a hallway fight. Okay, that's ridiculous. Um... I don't think we need to spend our gold on potions either. Let's save our gold. We are good savers. Um, we're going to upgrade Clothesline and Berserk anyway. We should do Clothesline first because we're not going to play Berserk in the next fight probably. Yeah, there's no way we're playing Berserk in this fight. Shrug it off. Perfected strike for a big hit. And take two. And now we can hopefully block all these turns. We have some more blocks in our draw pile too, so I think we're fine. Alright, we healed up to 26. We got a fruit juice, which gives us five max HP. Mmm, juicy. And now we have a choice between Body Slam, Juggernaut, and Disarm. Wow, Disarm is one of the best ironclad cards in the game. It makes enemy lose two strength. And since we're fighting Guardian, which has an X4 multi-attack, this means that whenever he uses that times that five times four, instead is three times four. So it saves us eight life every time he's attacking with that. Juggernaut is also worth mentioning. Whenever you gain block, it deals 5 damage to a random enemy. Guess what? We have Metallicize, which means we gain block every turn, and those are very good together. I think Disarm is too good not to take, although I would take a Juggernaut. And we can even upgrade this disarm. Hmm. 
Normally I like my arm, but not in this case. Disarm. <laughs> I get it. You're funny. Yeah, I'm going to try to take no damage this fight. I think it's possible. If we bash Sword Boomerang, then that is... This goes up to what? Four? Yeah, four, right? So 12 and 8 is 20. And 29 is exact lethal. Oh, we have Pennib. We have Pennib. I didn't even notice. Well, ma'am. Okay, I should try to remember about Pennib. We got a Blood Potion, too. We are healing. Um, yeah, we're, we're completely fine against the boss now. There's no way things can go poorly, I think. Don't need any of these cards. Because we survived Act 1 in good shape. And now we can also upgrade our Berserk. So it's only one turn of Vulnerable. Okay, so he's starting off with phase shift. If you don't, if we don't deal 40 damage to him, um, he will attack us for 36 or something. But um, yeah, we can consider disarm or strike here. He's gonna gain what nine block. We can strike to make sure the um, the phase shift occurs more reliably, I guess. That's probably a little bit better than disarm. So now we only need to deal 16. Ooh, but we can't deal 16. We can only deal 15! 3 times 3 plus 6. Why do I have to draw 3 non-attacks? Hmm. Well. So be it. This fight is going to be a little harder than I was hoping. Played this even though we blocked it to increment my pen nib by one. Okay, Berserk Plus. Tile size. Close line. Boom. Alright. Shrug. Hmm. I hope we have enough block next turn. Anyways. Okay, disarm is excellent. Um, and we can afford to perfected strike here. Yay, see, now what was, what was previously a 5 times 4 is a 2 times 4. Can he weaken down to 1 times 4? We gain 3 block from Metallicize, we don't even care. We have Pennib next turn. Alright, do we want to use a Pennib on a Strike? We could draw for something else, that's a little better. Sword Boomerang is significantly better. And bash if we want. This bash probably is more damage than um, perfected strike. Although we don't want him to be doing attacks next turn, so maybe not actually, because he's doing the six, the six times two or whatever. Um, we can strike here if we want to take one damage, but that seems not worth. Close line is nice, and we don't need to play anything else.
Charging up. Pendiber. Alright, is this lethal? Indeed it is! Boom! Smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. You can add a card to our deck. Immolate, Fiendfire, or Bludgeon. Guess what? In Act 2, there are a lot of fights that have multiple enemies. For example, the Gremlin Leader. An Immolate says deal 21 damage when it's upgraded 28, by the way to all the enemies, which means you can wipe out those gremlins. And versus the slavers, this is also a very strong card. We don't really need bludgeon or fiendfire, I don't think. Bludgeon is good in act one, but less good as you go along. And um, fiendfire... Yeah, we don't have a lot of card draw anyway, so... We also have some energy from Berserk. So the simulate is very good, very good. Oddly smooth. Act one down. Hooray, act one down. Very happy with the simulate. Alrighty, we have a choice between Slaver's Collar, which gains us energy during boss and elite combats. It does not gain us energy during hallway fights. We have Black Blood, which will replace Burning Blood, and then we heal 12 instead of 6 after each fight. Or we have Astrolab, where we transform 3 cards and then upgrade them. Which cards would we transform? Well, you see, normally I would transform 3 strikes, but we, then we would have a Perfected Strike that wouldn't deal any damage. So I guess I would both transform the Perfected Strike and 2 strikes. <laughs> and then we would upgrade the cards too. However, I think that energy is really important, and, um, you know, maybe we can take a path that will have a lot of elite fights, because, you know, we have the Preserved Insect, we have the Immolate, and we can try to avoid the hallway fights as much as we can, because question marks and elites are going to be way, way better than hallway fights anyway. Immolate going into Act 2? Yes, please. I, I agree. Immolate is one of my favorite cards to pick up from Act 1 boss. Because Act 2 is is when you just want to be dealing 21 damage to all enemies, you know? Relics with no downsides? Yeah, so most of the relics that gain energy at the start of your turn come with a downside. And Slaver's Collar's downside is that it doesn't gain energy during hallway fights. <laughs> but it's pretty small downside overall, must say. Um, I mean, it's not like it's a small downside, it's just like not really phrased as a downside. Right, someone keeps trying to call me. Can you not call me right now? Thanks. Um, yeah, okay. So our Act 2 boss is uh, the Collector, which Emily is also pretty useful for if we can collect the Torch Heads, which are the minions that it summons. Um, how many Elites can we fight? Hopefully a lot. Uh, looks like we can fight three if we fight the Spicy Elite, and then we have a Campfire, and then we have two more. Then we can have some question marks and a rest site or a shop. Um, and we can uh, try to avoid the hallway fights as much as we can if we go along like this. I don't know, maybe a, sh maybe a hallway fight is better than a shop. Yeah. I'm okay with taking a shop now. Let's see how this guy fight goes anyway. Alrighty, it is strategic and intends to inform afflict a powerful negative effect on us, which is a hex, which will mean that whenever we play a card that's not an attack, we will um, take 
three damage. No, we will shuffle a dazed into our draw pile. Don't know why I said something that was just completely wrong and made no sense. Anyways. Berserk Plus is great to do now while we're vulnerable. Although we might not be able to use that energy with all the dazed getting shuffled in. Um, disarm for one dazed, I think, is worth. Because it has a multi-attack, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we will not... No, he's going to make us vulnerable for more, maybe, though. Let's see. Could immolate or bash, which is better. So that's a burn to our discard pile. I like disarm and demolate here. Get the damage in. Okay, he made us weak. Not so bad. Okay, I guess the vulnerable would have been a lot better. I didn't really know for sure though that we were gonna draw all of our attacks. Yeah. So next turn might be a little rough. But we should defend. Gain six life. Alright, shrug it off is good. Do we want to defend first? Uh, yeah, probably to increase the chance of drawing days. We don't want to draw days. Hmm. We don't, yeah, we would rather draw days than defend, so. We decrease the chance of drawing defend. Yeah, it's fine. Oh my, an attack for 31. Ah! That's painful. That is really painful. Oh, I guess I used the pen nib up. Maybe I could have avoided. Well, there's not much I could have done, but... Okay, shrug it off, entrench, or inflame plus. So currently we have a sword boomerang, which scales nicely with inflame plus. We also don't really have a good source of damage for long fights. Like our damage is coming from, you know, the occasional immolate, the occasional perfected strike, the occasional clothesline plus. Inflame would allow us to do more damage. That being said, it is Act 2 and we love block cards. Shrug it off is a pretty good block card. Um, Entrench is also a pretty good block card when we have a lot of energy. Because we can effectively double the block that we drew. Um, I do like the shrug it off and the entrench, but I think the inflame is more important here. Especially since it's already upgraded. Who wouldn't take an inflame plus? Alright. Medkit is an insanely strong relic on Ironclad. It says that unplayable status cards can now be played. Whenever you play a status card, exhaust it. This notably has a very large amount of synergy with Power Through, which is an uncommon Ironclad card that gains 15 block and adds 2 wounds to your hand. Which this completely mitigates the wounds downside and even makes the wounds an upside if you have something like a Feel No Pain as well. Unfortunately, we cannot buy the medkit and the Feel No Pain, but the medkit, um, we won't be able to get it later and it just is really good. Like, we can draw, we can exhaust the burn that we shuffle in with Immolate. There's so many ways to get status cards in your deck. A lot of enemies shuffle burns. And Medkit is one of my favorites. So I'm pretty happy with purchasing a Medkit here. We don't have enough gold for anything else, but that is fine. Alrighty, it is birds. Um... Yeah, I was kind of hoping to avoid hallway fights, but this is fine. Berserk, when only one of them is attacking, is quite good. And now we can clothesline one of the guys that will be buffing, so he won't hit us for as much next turn. Now we're getting hit for 24, though. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. Uh... If we are doing Defend Metallicize, it probably makes more sense to perfect your strike than Sword Boomerang. Man, hallway fights. 
Hallway fights! I hate hallway fights. This was supposed to be an event, you know? Act 2 has good events. I didn't sign up for hallway fights. Also, we have to decide whether we want to attack the guy that's weakened or attack the guy that is not, um, that has more HP. Like this guy, for example. I think we do want to attack the guy that has less HP because, well, so Immolate is going to be doing, what, 10? Yeah, maybe we can kill this guy with Immolate or something. I don't know. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, 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 ow. Ow! Alright, disarm is perfect. Couldn't have asked for a better card. And now we can play our AoEs. Okay, we're getting here for 24 again. Not my favorite. What if we bash, strike, strike? Can we take that guy down? Bash deals 4, strike deals maybe 5, 4, 4. Maybe four even. So it gets rounded down. Nine rounds and down is four. Five, four, and four is definitely not enough. You can block for 24. Wow, cool. Don't care about the guy that has minus two strength. Uh, I kind of assumed that guy would be dead. <laughs> Awkward! I messed up. I took three damage for no reason. Penneb is on a good spot, which is nice. Don't want any of these cards. Goodbye. A long line of hooded figures can be seen entering an unassuming cathedral. Naturally, you join the line and are quickly surrounded by cultists. They ignore you as they gleefully chant and wave their weapons around. Murder! 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 Kaka! You eye a donation box. We can obtain 50 gold, or we can obtain a ritual dagger at the cost of 6 HP. There's one slight problem, which is that we're already down to 20 HP, and we haven't even done anything hard yet. Um, but we have potions, and these potions will heal us up to 25, and then up to 41. So really, we're going down to 35, which I think is acceptable, given that we think our deck is good versus elites. If it turns out to be not good versus elites, we'll be very sad. But Ritual Dagger is so good, I want. You decide to stay in line out of fear to see what will happen. Eventually, you are face to face with the leader. A well dressed cultist hands you an ornate dagger. Like the others before you, you slash your forearm and let the blood drip into a misshapen bowl. The cultists chant and holler for you. Kaka! You chant too, why not? A man with an eye patch and devilish grin strides up to you. Hey there, stranger. I'm interested in advancing science. I can make you stronger than any training or blessing. You're going to need it if you're one of those heroes with a death wish. What do you say? So we can get jaxed and gain two, three strength at the cost of two HP. We can transform two cards. In this case, probably like strike, perfected strike, I would guess. Um, or we can obtain a special relic, which gains us three strength on the very first turn of combat. This has some synergy with Bag of Marbles, because the three strength will get uh, even amplified further. So what is it? Transforming two cards or ingest mutagens and get the relic? We can also set up the relic with Pednib, so the three strength will be again doubled. Excuse me. I frequently like to choose Transform 2 cards here, but I think this might be a case where um, going for the extra 3 strength could be worth it. Like, for example, if we have a Ritual Dagger, you know, maybe that would 
uh, it gets like, yeah, so it gets doubled to 6 strength and then increased to 9 strength if we have these set up, so. I mean, 9 extra damage on an attack is definitely non-trivial. That being said, transforming 2 is really good, especially when we are trying to be more of a defensive deck, but I don't know. We're not really a defensive deck right now. We just want to be a defensive deck in the future. But I guess we're not really right now, so maybe the mutagenic strength is good. I'm down. Also, if we ever get some source of artifact, I'm pretty sure that we can cleanse the the, the debuff that gives us negative three strength, although I'm not sure about that. Marvelous! You quaff the mysterious substance. Immediately you are invigorated and feel your muscle fibers twitch. Guys, guess what? They're all vulnerable. <laughs> we drew Immolate on turn one. It's dealing double, which is 48, and dealing an additional 24 because they're vulnerable. 72 damage to the Gremlin Leader. Now that's what I call popping. Fire. <laughs> Fire indeed. Okay, we can disarm this guy who's trying to beat us up because we can't kill him. So now it's only 8 times 4. We are barely alive, right? 8 times 3 is 12 and we're at 24. We're at 26, I mean. Yeah, we're barely alive. And can we kill with Ritual Dagger? It'd be really nice if we could. So 14 and 15 is 29 and 6. Yep, yeah, it's exactly full. 14, 20, 35. Nice. 29 gold. An Omamori, which negates the next two curses we obtain. This could be useful. An Emerald Key, a Blood Potion, which is very good. So we should go ahead and drink our Fruit Juice. Um, we can drink the Blood Juices whenever, by the way. And now a choice of cards to add to our deck. Guys, there's a Barricade here. Is it too early for Barricade? I don't, don't think so. Barricade is a truly incredible card in the very end of the game. So for Act 3 boss fights, for the heart, um, having a barricade in our deck will be truly incredible because we don't need to worry about our block going away at the end of our turn and we can just gain tons and tons of block. Unfortunately, our deck does not have a lot of block right now and so it's kind of a curse. Um, but I think that it is worth to have it in our deck because eventually it will be so good. Um, and I think we're doing okay right now. Block is not roomed at the start of your turn. And we want to be fighting elites and we don't want to be fighting hallway fights, so, uh... Should we rest or should we smith? That's a good question. We are at uh, each of these hill for 16. So we are at uh, 32 plus 13 is 45. We have two elites coming up. Our best smith is um, Immolate. Immolate is a very good smith here. If we're fighting slavers, that could actually save us a comparable boat to mess thing. Eh. Actually, maybe not. Like we're we're at forty five. Wait, what did I say? We are at yeah. We're at forty five versus two elites. Is that safe? We have preserved insect and we have bag of marbles. But we don't have a lot of blocking. We also have a curse now with barricade. We do have disarm versus um stabbing. Hmm. I'm actually not feeling as safe as I thought I was. Our deck is missing some defense at the moment. I'm gonna rest. Never hurts to be careful. 
I mean, it does hurt to be careful, but... I don't know. Alright, we drew Sword Boomerang, which has very good synergy with mut Mutagenic Strength. It means that, um... It's dealing 6 times 3 instead of 3 times 3, so it's basically getting a double. And we full block this hit. He's already down to 100. And we drew Disarm! Hooray! Should probably draw cards first. Okay, Barricade we don't care about, really. Inflame is really good. And we full block this hit, too. Um. Alright, Clothesline is very, very good. Are we gonna play Shargat off and defend? Are we gonna be playing Berserk? Probably not gonna be immolating, I think. So shrug first. Ooh, ritual dagger? Hmm. So we can play Berserk if we're willing to take... Let's see, how much? Well, the thing is, we might just want a ritual dagger right now. Okay. So if we play Defend Berserk, we take, um... I forget how it interacts with weak. Uh, maybe the weak applies first, so then we take 22. So we take 4 damage. Not berserk to not take 4 damage. Uh, then we could get an extra strike in next turn, maybe. Or we can ritual dagger, and probably not berserk, right? How greedy are we here? We're gonna have Pendim next turn, which means we can bash Perfected Strike. And the Perfected Strike will be doubled and he'll be vulnerable. How much damage is that? So we currently have 3 Strike, so Bash will deal 11. Then Perfected Strike we said deals 16, right? 16 plus 3 is 19. Plus Pennib is 38, plus Vulnerable is uh, 57. Alright, 57. Plus 21 is 78, and he's at 74. Yeah. Okay. Alternatively, Okay, 57. So if we Berserk this turn, we have enough energy to Cleave next turn. Cleave next turn will be dealing 11 plus 5 is 16. 16 and 57 is only 73, though. So unless I did some math wrong, we can't go defend Berserk here. Oh! Oh, that uses... That increments Pendib, though, which I didn't account for. Um... Okay, let's do the math again, because we should figure out if we need to Berserk here. So say we do Perfected Strike first, 32. And then if we Strike Cleave, then that's 20, so 52, which is one off lethal. If we do Bash first, that's 16 and 24, which is only 40. So perfected strike 32, strike 9, 41, 52. Okay, I guess we need a berserk. That is unfortunate. I may have made a mistake. We'll see. I don't know. Did I do my math wrong? Okay, 
So much to perfect the strike too. I think I did my math wrong. Don't think I need. I mean, I didn't need to berserk. I don't know how I did my math wrong, but uh, somehow. Power through with medkit, friends. We can add two wounds to our hand and immediately exhaust them with the medical kit. Hooray. Toxic egg, whenever you add a skill into your deck, upgrade it. I want to be adding skills to my deck. I want block cards. We have barricade. Perfected strike did 38. Yeah, didn't I say it would do 38? Or did I not? Oh, I said it would do 32. Yeah, uh... Oh, yeah. I said it would do 32, because I'm silly. Forgot about my strength. Well, that's what happens when you draw Emulate turn one with this deck. <laughs> yeah. I guess we really we really didn't need to upgrade it. We really didn't need to rest at that campfire, did we? Uh, I mean, it's just hard. Because like, if you don't draw Emulate, then that fight you take a million damage in. But when you do draw Emulate, it's, it's popping. The first time you lose HP each combat, draw three cards. Nice. Armaments plus. Gain five block and upgrade all cards in your hand for the rest of combat. Uh, we like that, right? Usually armaments is a little questionable when it's unupgraded. But I think the upgraded version is just good. Although we are going to have a lot of our cards upgraded from the toxic egg, but... Um, I'm pretty sure it's good. Guess what? Our tiny chest gave us another chest. 26 gold and a choice between Blood File and Sapphire Key. Blood File says at the start of combat, heal 2 HP. I think here we take Sapphire Key. Don't need the 2 HP per fight from Blood File. Alrighty, this is a hallway fight. Which means we don't have our favorite energy. We can armament strike strike. We can bash strike. Probably armament slow. Emulate is good. I should have played Shrug first, but now is better than never. We should try to get this Ritual Dagger upgraded this fight. I think we can. Alrighty. Power through. Okay, so we're still getting hit for 22. Can we kill anything? No, but we should cleave. Consider using the explosive potion here, but maybe next turn. I'm not gonna berserk, because the one vulnerable would cost us quite a bit. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, so we should probably just Explosive Pot and, like, Perfected Strike and something. I'm not sure what thing, but... I should not forget that we have Art of War, by the way. It's not relevant right now, but I had forgotten it. Oh, Pen Nib. Oh, we can kill. So if we kill, 
Um, we do not have the pleasure of upgrading our card, but we save 13 life. And even then we might not have it anyway, so we should just kill it. Nice. 14 gold, a flex potion. And the choice between sword boomerang, flex, and uppercut. Do we want an uppercut? Do we want a flex plus? I don't think we want a flex plus. I also don't really think we want an uppercut. We already have clothesline plus for weakness. An unupgraded uppercut seems kind of meh. This will be a skip. Upgrade something. Upgrading emulate is pretty strong. Upgrading power through for an extra five block is pretty strong. Upgrading barricade so it doesn't cost as much to get it in play is pretty strong. Is barricade good versus the collector? Um, I don't know. Maybe not that good. Emulator is probably the better upgrade here. I think I'll take a question mark over a shop. 74 gold is a decent amount, but I like that two question marks. And it's a freaking hallway fight. Thanks, man. Mutagenic strength coming in for some damage. We are now confused. Gain as much block as we can. Our Trips and Sunny puzzle will trigger. Maybe we can draw some zero cost cards. Or moments to upgrade our hand, I guess. Ritual Dagger. We can try to go for the Ritual Dagger later. Twenty-seven! What the heck, oh Mr. Sneko? Seven again, oh, and I'm still weakened though. This is so sad. Why are hallway fights so disastrous? Disastre. We're not going to be able to go for our ritual dagger, huh? Wait, we can't even kill it, or can we? We could kill it if we use our potion. Just go for the ritual dagger, I guess. And be really, really sad about it. Another emulate seems extremely unnecessary. But it might be still good. If we get snack a lot, it'll be good. 
If we face Reptomancer, it'll save us. Uh, our deck is kind of filling up with junk attacks. It's not that it's filling up, it's just that it had a lot in it to begin with. Maybe just because Reptomancer is a fight that we plan on doing, because we have our Preserved Insect and stuff. We should, uh... Mm. Hmm. Definitely don't want the other two. And two mana deal 21 to all enemies is generally... good. I think it's good. Do we need to rest? Um, okay, that's a good question. That is a very good question. What would we like to upgrade? Man, getting that Sneko is so unlucky. It was just a question mark. And, uh... I don't know. We should probably rest, right? Like, this fight could be extremely difficult. We might die in this fight, to be honest. Alright, we got our Pednib mutagenic strength thing. Ideally, we'd be using the... Well, I think we've been the pendant with an emulate when there are the torch heads out there. But since we're not guaranteed to draw emulate next turn or even anytime soon at all, I think that's a lot worse. And we should just um, go for it now. So much damage. Wow. Maybe I, maybe I even did the one that did more damage. Gosh, maybe I should have done them in the other order. I didn't even think about it. Alright. Yeah, so we have our potions. Um. Okay, we can get barricade in play. That's good. Upgrade all this stuff. Um, so between these three cards, I think Metallicize and Barricade is the best. Defend and Barricade is also an option. Wait, we're getting hit for 35. So that would save us four life. Probably not worth it. Alright, we got our Centennial Puzzle card draw, but we still didn't get our Immolate Plus. Mm, we can draw for it, I guess. How do we have six energy? It's because we have Berserk in play, and we got Art of War energy. Wow. That was really good. Should weaken the boss, I guess? And try to survive. Emulate plus will kill those now. So we should just defend up. Take some damage. So any luck, it won't summon more of them. Although, knowing my luck, it will. Five weakened, five vulnerable, five frail. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. At least it's not summoning more of them. We have that one thing going for us. 
at least it's not summoning more of them. We can survive this hit. We should maybe consider using the Flex Potion on this turn, actually. We have Sword Boomerang and a lot of attacks. I think it's worth. Oh. What? Okay, that did way more damage than I was expecting, but admittedly I completely forgot about Pen Nib. Alright. Another Barricade XD. Brutality says at the start of your turn, lose one HP and draw one card. Um, hmm. How do we feel about losing one HP and drawing one card? I normally don't pick Brutality that much because kind of takes a while for it to pay off, and even then it's questionable. Demon form is another option. How good is demon form? How good is demon form? I don't know how good Demon Farm is. I mean, it's some scaling. A little further longer fights at the end of Act 3, which we're going to have a hard time with. But wouldn't we much rather go for like a block plan? Since we have the barricade. Like, we'd much rather get like a corruption or like uh, entrench or something. Like the barricade scaling is I think what we want to be going for, not the demon form scaling. So isn't that, if that's the case, is demon form even worth picking up? I'm not really convinced by it. Like spending three energy? I mean we could get a snack away, but I don't know. I think this might be a... I think this might be a skip actually. Believe it or not. All right, busted crown, gain energy at the start of your turn. Future card rewards have two less cards to choose from. Um, Sozu, gain energy at the start of your turn. You can no longer obtain potions. Or sacred bark, which is worse than those. So would we rather not be able to gain potions or get less cards from our card rewards? I mean, we still need cards. Let's see, we have 26 cards in our deck. And right now, this deck is not being the heart. At all. But what cards do we need? What if we just need to remove cards? Like, we have four strikes right now. Four strikes, a cleave, and a perfected strike. I mean, this can be solved with more card draw, I guess, but... Definitely be on the lookout for Battle Trance. Um, definitely be on the lookout for Entrench. Definitely be on the lookout for more Shrug it offs and Power Throughs. Yeah, I think we can take a Sozu instead of a Busted Crown here. Just get card draw and spend our energy effectively. We can get a lot of energy. We have the Slaver's Collar, the Art of War, the Sozu, and even a Berserk in our deck. I th believe that it's possible. And we can actually... Okay, we can fight three Elites, it looks like. One of these. And if we do this one... Then we can do this one, or this one, this one, and one of those two. Um, so either way, we should go to this one. Um, 
Which one has the least hallway fights? Well, we have to have three hallway fights no matter what. Let's, um, take the question marks after the hallway fights, I guess. So we can go here. Oh wait, no, we can, we can divert to hallway fights. I don't like hallway fights. My deck has a slaver's collar, you know? A nice hit for 21 damage to all enemies. Not an emily, but still good. Uh, 18 damage or metallicize. I think 18 damage might be more relevant, actually. Maybe we can kill one of the guys that's buffing. Alright, we did not draw an emily. Can we kill this guy? Yes, but it costs. So we can either kill it, or we can gain 12 block. Probably just gain 12 block. He'll respawn anyway, so... Getting the life is good, and... Oh, we still did not try emulate. They're both in the bottom seven. That's a little awkward. You can kill this guy and then avoid 9 damage. Um, can do that with like Inflame Strike even. Don't need Barricade here. What? I thought he was at 9. Could have sworn he was at 9, but he was at 10 this whole time? What? That's ridiculous. Unbelievable. Well, we didn't get Ritual Dagger, but at least we didn't take any more damage. Fire Breathing Plus, whenever you draw a status or curse card, deal 10 damage all enemies. Nah, we're exhausting those with our fire with our med kit. We don't need fire breathing. It is an orb walker. Might as well shrug, see what we get. Now we're up to five energy, but we are taking a million damage. Oh, unlucky. Oh, we have Pennip and I didn't, I literally need to stop forgetting about Pennip. Okay. I forget about Pennip almost every time. And I think it costing a lot. Let's see, we got 6 damage from the strike, but we could have gotten 21 extra from the emulate, so we missed out like at least 15 damage. So I guess that's not 21? Or was it 21? Uh, no, it probably wasn't. Okay, where's our ritual dagger? It's in the bottom. Maybe we can draw it? We cannot draw it. Uh, well then. We can still go for it. We just take three damage, which is worth oh, only two damage. Because Metal Size Plus got upgraded. 20 gold. Um, Sentinel, if this card is exhausted, gain three energy. Seems not so good. We don't have a way of exhausting it. You happen upon a group of what looks like purple fire spirits dancing around a large bonfire. The spirits toss small bones and fragments into the fire, which brilliantly erupts each time. As you approach, the spirits all turn to you expectantly. So we get to remove a card. Option one, we could remove a strike. Option two, we can remove a yellow card to get healed to full and gain 10 max HP. So we can remove this Immolate, which we added to our deck, for example. 
We don't need a second Emolite, really, and 10 max HP and a Heal of the Fall is very strong. Um, I think that's way better than removing a strike, actually. Pretty sure. The flames burst, nearly knocking you off your feet as the fire doubles in strength. The spirits dance around you excitedly before merging into your form, filling you with warmth and strength. Your max HP increases by 10, and you are healed to full. That's a good, a good question mark. Question marks, please keep treating me well. Oh, it's a membership card, and it's also a limit break. It's also a ghostly armor plus another berserk. Alrighty, a backpack. Man, there's so many really good things here. Let's think. Um, first of all, a membership card costs 160, but then gives us um, an additional 140. So this is just like an insta buy. Now all prices are reduced by 50%. Now we have to choose between Limit Break Plus, Bag of Prep. Um, alrighty. So we have one in Flame and we also have Mutagenic Strength. Uh, do we have any other synergy with Limit Break? Not really. But, let's see. Is Limit Break or Backpacks better? Uh, either way, we can afford the Ghostly Plus. Another Berserk is honestly not what we need. How about card remove? Card remove is good. Card remove is quite good, actually. Uh -oh. oh, what such decisions! Such decisions! Might be limit break and card remove actually. Wow. Okay, so like, Limit Break gives us some, like if the fight goes really long, for example, um, the Dono and Dekka actually is not that good of an example, but how do we beat Dono and Dekka? How do we beat Dono and Dekka? We play Immolates, maybe? I don't know. I guess Limit Break is good. I don't know. Let me break, if the fight is like, okay, so the, what I was going to say is, like the Awakened One, if we're fighting the Awakened One, we double our strength, and then we double our strength, and we can wait, we can trigger the form shift whenever we have enough strength, so that the next form is kind of irrelevant. Um, bag of Preparation makes us effectively draw two cards, which is kind of similar to removing two strikes, but not really. Um, because we might get the important cards. I think Limit Break is worth having the option of going for. I'm not sure where our deck is going, but Limit Break is pretty good. 
Ghostly Armor Plus is obviously quite good, but I think I'm going to go for the card remove. Alright, tiny chest coming through with a treasure room for us. Unfortunately, Mercury's Hourglass is not doing much. Just three damage to all enemies at the start of our turn. Kind of not good in Act 3, you know? Alright, we can disarm this guy. We should draw a card. Okay, getting Barricade in play ASAP is really important. Uh, unfortunately, we drew Limit Break on turn two, so we don't have Mutagenic Strength, and we also drew it before um, In Flame. Kind of unlucky because it doesn't do anything. Well, we'll get our um, Centennial Puzzle Drawing at least. Should try to get Barricade in play if we can. Alrighty, Barricade it is. We would really love to close line here, but if we're also going for Berserk, then we would take 15, which is not good. I actually think that might be still better, though, than blocking this. 3 weakness or 15, or 15 life? Eh, maybe the 15 life. What about in flame or six life? Because in flame is quite a lot of damage. Like quite a lot. I'm gonna play the in flame here. Okay, maybe the three weakness was better. I'm not sure. Boom! And we take another big hit. Yeah, we'd be dead if we didn't heal with that purple fire spirits, wouldn't we? Okay. Just gotta deal the damage and hope we can kill it soon before we die. Uh, we have six energy. We don't have anything with Pednib. How much damage are we doing if we say defend? Well, defend and bash always happen, right? So we can just play them and then we can compute later. Perfected Strike is just strictly better than Cleave. Um, but the question is, do we... Oh yeah, so we... Do we Cleave Perfected Strike or do we Defend Perfected Strike? Uh, well, if it's not lethal, we will die if we don't... Okay, so this is dealing, what, 30? Is that in, in, in taking account that it has slow too? Yeah, it's only receiving 20% more. Okay, so 30 and 36 is lethal, so it's fine. Whew, that was rough. Molten Egg, whenever we add an attack card to our deck, upgrade it. I doubt we'll be adding more attacks, but you never know. Pummel Plus with our Limit Break. It's like hitting for some amount and exhausting. Um, if we have Inflame first, it does uh, 25. If we have it on turn one with Mutagenic Strength, it also does 25 more with Vulnerable. I think it's good. 
It's a little questionable, but I think it's good. Remove a card from our deck. I'd love to. I think it's time to remove the perfected strike also. We barely have any strikes, right? We didn't add any. Yeah. Great. That's really good. Um, we Can we fight an elite at 44? Probably yes. Um, we also have one more chance at an event. We also need the sapphire key at some point. Hmm. I think we're okay versus Reptomancer, but we'll see. I guess we won't see. It is the nemesis. Indeed, it is the nemesis. I should have drawn Cotters first. I'm not sure why I didn't. Barricade might have been nice to get in play. I'm not sure. Now he's intangible. Disarm is great. Penib's on seven. All right, is this the big hit? Nope, this is the small hit. Small hit is good for us. Although, do we even want to berserk? We take an extra six. Or do we? Does it go up to four times three or five times three? Maybe it's only four times three. So I guess it's only an extra three. That's reasonable. <gasps> Poggers! And an incense burr! The best relic in the game, I think. Wow. That went way better than I was expecting it to. Um... A Shrug It Off Plus is being offered, which I would love to add to our deck. Maisie, what is this emote? I love it. Oh, it's a new Pog Champ? I'm so happy. They, were, they, they kept Pog Champ with a new face. That's the perfect solution. Right, that is the global emote, right? It says global. Yeah. It changes every 24 hours? Oh, cool. Wait, is that cool? Yeah, that's cool, right? That way? Okay, that way it's resilient to whatever the hecking person does in their personal life. Which I think it should be. Uh, 24 gold and a Vadra? Vadra also is really good with limit break, because then we'll have more strength for when we double our strength. So I'm happy with that as well. Should probably stop by this shop since we have a membership card and we have a 50% discount on all products. All right. All right. There is a Shockwave Plus here. Five weak and five vulnerable. Very, very good in long fights, like the heart, for example. We can also apply weakness without interrupting our... Uh, Art of War versus the Heart, which could be very good. I think Shockwave Plus is good. I think it's good. Violence Plus draws four cards, kind of. And it's like, remove four bad cards from your draw pile if there are four bad cards in your draw pile. Our attacks are, for the most part, kind of bad. Um, that costs 93 gold, by the way. There's also a Sling of Courage, which we don't really need. A Bronze Scales, which does a ton of damage versus the Heart. Um, in particular, does like 48 every three turns. So that's basically like 100 damage. Um, I think we take the bronze scales and the shockwave. Card removing costs 50. 
But there's no way card removing is more valuable than one of these. The only question is violence. Hmm. Can't purchase violence anymore! I love bronze scales. Yeah. It's good. So many shrugging. Shrugs. <laughs> Shrugs. We drew all our block cards though, it's a little worrying. Let's try to set up incense burner to be something good. Do we immolate? It interrupts Art of War, but it deals 27. Um, by the way, what do we want Incense Burner to be on? We want it to be on... 4 for Reptomancer. Kill my 27. Thank you. Do like 27. Let's also not forget about pen nib. I never forget about pen nib. Okay, this is 11 times 5, which is a decent chunk. You might call a, a chunk. Maybe we can kill for the ritual dagger and set up incense burner. It's possible. need any more weakness on that guy. This is dealing quite a bit of damage. Let's get barricade in play. So we have some block for next turn. We are intangible for his big whomping attack, which is always good. Pendib is active for next turn. But we're gonna wait till that goes up to four before we do anything too crazy. All right. I don't know why I keep playing limit break. It's really unnecessary. We are going to kill it when it's on four. Is that our highest priority? I think it should be. Our second highest priority is the um, ritual dag. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's not going to work out because ritual dagger is not in here. We could wait for another round, but this guy starts dealing massive, massive amounts of damage like he is right now. So that is not a good plan. Wait, I took 13. Oops. Guess I should have calculated how much I was doing there. Duplication potion, rip. Second wind, uh, exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand, gain seven block for each card exhausted. I don't want to exhaust my non-attack cards, really. No thanks. What about headbutt plus for limit break? So you headbutt and then you put your limit break back on top. I guess you could put your power through on top. You could put a shrug on top. Um, I think it's okay. Alright, do we need to rest here? We could recall here and then decide rest after the elite fight. Assuming we don't die to the elite fight. We have a potion. Yeah, let's recall. I like giving myself the flexibility to either rest or smith based on how the elite fight goes. Giant head again! Hmm, that one went poorly last time.
Uh, let's ritual dagger while he's vulnerable. Uh, yeah, I guess so. And we don't have to draw it again anyway. Oh, I should have played the defend so he's a little slower. Um. Hmm. I could headbutt something, but there's nothing good to headbutt. Which is why maybe I shouldn't have added a headbutt to our deck. The weakening could be useful. I am a little concerned though, to be honest. Because Inflame was in the bottom, so we couldn't get our Limit Break scaling going. Oh, am I dead to Giant Head, really? Um, I don't know. Centennial puzzle. This just does so much more damage after we get the other stuff going. Okay, we full blocked this hit. So I think we're probably not dead. Are we... yeah, this is lethal, right? Nice. Alright. Self-forming clay! Whenever you lose HP, gain 3 block next turn. This is really good versus the heart, where you can take a little bit of damage with Beat of Death, and then you'll gain a bunch of block for the next turn. So playing cards can actually be a good thing. Despite the Beat of Death being up. It's a corruption! Oh my gosh. Ah. Uh, whoa. We have how many skills? One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Corruption is gonna be insane versus Dono and Deca. Actually. Although, do we even need the energy to play our skills? Because we have a lot of energy. <laughs> Um. And exhausting the skills is kind of a downside, right? Maybe we just don't need the energy and we just have enough our energy already. In that case, corruption's not so good, right? We just need card draw. Try to set up incense burner. We want it on high numbers. Oh, 
Oh, but it's gonna die to the thorns. Oops, it's on a low number. Uh, I don't know. Inflame another one for limit break. Is, are we just going with the limit break plan? If we are, the second inflame is good. Um. I have absolutely no idea what this deck is doing. It just doesn't seem very good to me. Is it good? Is it not good? No one knows. Should we rest? Should we smith? What would we smith? Smith our power through. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we should rest, probably. Maybe we're okay for Stono and Deca, but I don't really see it. I just really don't see it. Limit break before we got... Oh, limit break when we have our mutagenic strength. Okay. I like that. Uh, we should still draw cards first, though. Now should we shockwave to get rid of the weakened and vulnerable? I mean, to get rid of the artifact, sorry. What am I saying? Um... Goodbye artifact, maybe that'll be helpful. Self-forming clay proc. Always love to see that. Uh, draw cards first. Disarm. Weaken. Full block or immolate? Uh, I like full block. And cleave. Okay, we can headbutt our limit break. And uh, then we were, were having a limit break, right? Yeah. Got all the inflames. Don't want barricade in this fight. Twenty-two times five. Maybe we should target this guy as ever any time we kill him with 20 strength next turn. Well, with 20 strength and we have a sword boomerang? There's a chance. There's a chance. That pummel was actually really good. Bash to make him vulnerable. Oh, and we have this thing. Okay. Boom! Got our intangible coming up, so uh, we're going to want to get this on a higher number for the next fight. Probably like four, I want to say. Four is usually safe.
Okay, this limit break plan rarely worked out in this fight. Um, we can have this on two if we want to get a ritual dagger, but we could draw it then turn after anyway, so... Probably not worth. And now we kill with ritual dagger. Nice. It is the awakened one. Um, okay. Intangible next turn. Gotta play powers, he's gonna get so angry. I mean, we don't really have to play the Metallicize, right? Do we have to play the Berserk? We don't really want to be vulnerable right now anyway, so... Maybe we skip both powers? This power saves us HP in the short term. We took seven. Uh, this is unfortunately not killing. We can combo it with Bash to kill. Um, we can even combo it with Strike. Right? 45? Yeah. And we can Bash on this guy. And we can probably save the Pummel, because Pummel is a good card. Okay, here's the multi-attack where we played a lot of powers. We can weaken him with this. Yeah. Let's see what we draw. Limit break? Hmm. We're not dead. We are suffering. Oh, do we play this in flame or don't we? We have an Inflame Plus that we'll play next turn. And then we never need to play the other Inflame because we can just Limit Break. That might be better. Also, it means we take less damage this turn. And save the Pendant for next turn too. Because why not? Alright, disarm. Inflame has to be played. 32, huh? Uh, well, we're only at 31. No, we are at 30. We're at 31 plus 4, so... 23 is 35, yeah, okay. So we don't need to potion just yet. And we should put the mid break back on top. Um, we should strike, I think. We can survive this next turn, we'll make it to the intangible. But will we survive this next turn? Oh, we have barricade up! Wait! 
Since when did we have barricade up? Have I been not playing defense just because I didn't feel like it? That definitely seems like something I've been doing. Uh... Oh my gosh. Okay, please play all the block cards. Nineteen times three. Okay, we can actually play this berserk um, if we kill him because he won't gain two strength. Something worth considering for sure. Weekend. I'm gonna play all the block cards because we have the barricade stuff. Oh, I did that in the wrong order. I don't think it matters, but I really have Bethel there. Okay, so what needs to be set up? This thing wants to be on exactly four. We can kill it right now. That's fine. Then there's no risk involved. Just means pen nib is not set up, but we managed to squeeze out keeping our potion because we rested. Great. Thump, thump, thump! A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire? The source of this evil? You ready your blade? Attack! We deal 2070 damage. The heart squirms and bleeds, but is ultimately still pounding. Are your mightiest attacks not enough? You ask yourself, have I been here before? The heart pulses louder and louder as your consciousness begins to fade. A sudden burst of energy emanates from inside of you, jolting you awake. The heart retreats upwards. A large door is revealed in its place. Final act, the ending. We are at 70 HP, which means we should rest, right? Uh, 20 HP is better than any upgrade, right? RIP upgrades, we rested so much recently. Membership card, maybe we can squeeze out something? Uh, well, not quite. Burning Pact is really interesting, though. Oh, Evolve is really interesting, actually. We can purchase both. No, we can't. I lied. Um, okay, so Burning Pact, exhaust one card, draw three cards. That's good. All right, Evolve is drawing a ton of cards. And it's more spread out, but it doesn't exhaust anything. Um, but you don't need to exhaust things if you have Evolve. Because the junk will draw you more cards. So I think Evolve is better. I think it's better than card removal for sure, yeah. I mean, okay, that's maybe less clear. Because we get to remove a strike if we card remove. No, it's, it's definitely good, right? It must be good. 
Good for sword and spear. Okay, so we have Shockwave, Metal Size, Shrug. Should shrug first to see what we get, as always. Keep in mind we are intangible for next turn. There will be two burns on top of our deck, which we can exhaust with the uh, med kit. Limit break is exactly the worst time. We uh, don't have mutagenic strength, and we also haven't drawn either of our inflames yet. So that's kind of a yikes. Do we take five in order to draw with Centennial Puzzle? Hmm. I don't think so. We'll draw a Centennial Puzzle eventually. Seven. We should definitely be turning around. Oh, I could have gotten my self-forming clay value if I hadn't defended. Oh my goodness, that was a huge mistake. I forgot about self-forming clay. I need to remember all of my relics. Every last one of them. Yeah, I mean, it was just a huge mistake, that's all. Uh, what are we headbutting? Like, power through or something? I think Inflame is happening here. Immolate is doing quite a bit. Maybe we can kill that guy, actually. Um, I can disarm that guy. Also sword boomerang, but storm seems fine. All right, we want to kill next turn if possible because we want that to be on four. And about 9 2. Pocket watch whenever you play three or less cards during your turn. Draw three additional cards at the start of your next turn. Man, if we needed card draw because our deck is garbage, guess what? We can draw three cards extra per turn at the small cost of only being able to throw three cards per turn. Okay, maybe that's not that small of a cost, but that is going to be used, I bet you, during this fight coming up. 
Okay, and also I really, really need to not remember to not forget about self farming Kai. Okay, we have an option to take a heavy blade, and I don't think we should ignore this. It's a heavy blade plus, which means it scales five times with strength. And we have a limit break. Which means eventually we will be dealing a lot, a lot of damage. I mean, on turn one, this is really bad, but... Like, if we get up to 10 strength, this is already dealing 64. That way we'll get some damage in before we draw the limit break again. Oh, this is quite a decision. Um, I think we should take it, though. I actually do. This thing also scales 5 with strength. Maybe we don't need another one? I think it's good. We have the energy for it, for the most part. We should drink this, right? There's nothing else that heals us. Nothing else that heals us, yeah. Alrighty, here goes! Here goes! Okay, so self farming clay. So if he's doing the multi attack next turn, then he is attacking for zero. Which means that we don't want to gain block with self farming clay because he won't be attacking us for anything. Get him, George. Let's go, Gurgle. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think I'll need some need some good luck here. Um. However, if he is doing a big attack next turn, then um, playing self forming clay is or using our HP as a resource is good. But first of all, we want to actually be playing a lot of these cards, and if we also want the card draw from... Okay, okay, there's so much to think about, because first of all, Centennial Puzzle is going to trigger if we don't play Defend. Um, which I think is good. It might be not good if we want to just play exactly three cards next turn so we have more cards to draw next turn when he's attacking but okay evolve is super good disarm is super good and inflame is also super good so really but what if we draw limit break yeah yeah yeah, I think we take the card draw now. Pretty sure. We can play a bunch of cards now, and I think it'll be fine. Art of War. Centennial Puzzle. Incense burner. Oh, incense burner for next turn! I completely forgot about that. Okay, so if he's doing the big attack, we're fine. If he's doing the multi attack, we're also fine. Um, which means that it's actually realistic that we can save this if we want. Hmm.
Guys, it's a hard decision because... So here's the thing. I want to play three cards because I want to trigger Pocket Watch, right? And so I should just play these three cards. But I can save myself some beat of death damage if I play all of these cards. And that being the case, I... Wait. Am I trick and, and the question is, do I want to try to save Centennial Puzzle for a different turn? When I don't have cards that I want to play, like these. Because there's a lot of cards in our deck that we don't want to play, and if we draw a lot of them, we're going to want to use Centennial Puzzle, you know? Nah. Nah, there's no way to preserve the Centennial Puzzle. Let's just see what we draw. Let's just see what we draw. Go ahead and disarm. Yeah. Alright, we got Limit Break, which is actually insane because now we can inflame Limit Break. Um, and that being the case, we're not pocket watching because we need to evolve. Which means that we're also metallicizing, I want to say, or are we just defending? Defending gains us four life. This gains us some life at the end of each turn, but... Yeah, and it also removes the card from our deck, which is not irrelevant either. Okay. We're gonna take a bunch of beat to death. It's fine. Oh, this, okay, this self-forming clay is not necessarily going to waste because whenever we play a card, we still have beat of death damage. So actually... Okay, headbutting limit break is actually so good. Um, this is actually so good also. And berserk is actually also so good, but then we don't exhaust our stuff. But we don't need to exhaust our stuff because we have Evolve. Which means that we can play exactly three cards and trigger Pocket Watch. Um, we are going to be taking a massive hit next turn, but he will be weakened. Pennib, never forget. Incense Burner, never forget. Art of War, never forget. Bronze Scales, never forget. Bronze Scales, probably I don't need to remember because it just does its own thing, kind of independent of what I do. Pocket Watch is very much an important to never forget. Uh, incense Burner, yeah. It's too bad that Incense Burner went to waste, but... Yeah, I mean it would have been a, it would have been it would have been almost too much to ask for if he was doing the big attack right now. But maybe maybe it'll be helpful next it'll be almost certainly helpful next time around. <laughs> Boo, never forget. Bro, we're not fighting Nemesis. Boom, bronze scales, beat him up. Alright, Barricade. We have to gain as much block as we can. We also have to play Limit Break. Uh, bronze Scales is probably not worth... I mean, Self-Forming Clay is probably not worth going for right now, so... Or is it? Losing life is better... Well, if we're playing Barricade. How much is Heavy Blade doing, by the way? 77? 
Oh my, it's a decision turn again. I don't... Okay, Limit Break is an absolute must play. And if we Limit Break, Heavy Blade is nuking. Just don't forget, forehead. <laughs> How good is Barricade? Barricade means that block we next get next turn from self-forming clay will not go away. What if the play here is actually just Limit Break, Heavy Blade, Barricade? Because we don't die. And playing these, not playing these is only costing us 7. Uh, 7 and 4, like... And isn't, isn't the card draw and damage worth it? Well, actually, I mean, it's two card draw if we play the shrug, so that's actually silly. Right? Like, card draw now is almost as good as card draw next turn. Okay, so we have six mana. Nah, it's two card draw, because we only have enough mana for the one shrug it off anyway. So it's seven life versus two cards. Um, I honestly want to take the two cards, but could be wrong. How much did we go down to, by the way? Take two, take two, take two. We go down to 52, minus 47. We go down to 5. No, we get go down to minus 3, so... Uh, we go down to 8. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, really, we're higher than eight because because of self-forming clay barricades. So it's fine. Uh, uh, I do think I do think it's probably fine. Oh wait, that was all of our energy. I was thinking about all this stuff for nothing. I was being a silly goose, I think. Ah, uh, don't mind me. Alrighty, our hand is full. Do we want to be just playing three cards, or do we want to be playing all of our defense and stuff? Um... We want to not die next turn. Uh, we want to kill him, too. How much damage can we deal? 75? More than 75. Okay, so Armaments is happening, and Sword Boomerang is happening. That's unde undeniable. Shrug it off should have you happening, too. And now we should be gaining our block, right? Yeah. I think it's worth the three card draw now, because it's a lot of life. Don't need to trigger Beat of dead Death unnecessarily for these wounds here. Three times fifteen. Uh, 
All right, that took care of the invincible. And we have pocket watch. So now we need to either have lethal or not be dead. One of the two. And we're not dead. Perfect. This will trigger the invincible. Killed it with plenty of turns to spare too. Because <laughs> this turn was to free, next turn was also free because of Incense Burner. So we just needed to survive those two turns. Ritual Dagger. Dang, I really did not have faith in this deck, but maybe our maybe our draw was just really good. I think that was sort of like the best we could have hoped for, like Evolve turn one and Inflame Limit Break turn one. Because then we got Headbutt to get Limit Break again. And we got good use out of Pocket Watch. We drew so many cards with Pocket Watch. Like this, like single-handedly, I feel like, made us maybe even favored going into the heart. Whereas without it, just nothing. <laughs> I don't know. And then Incense Burner super late too, like that was... Well, it didn't do anything versus the heart, but it did a lot versus Sword and Spear, I think. Um, Self-forming clay was cool. Wow. That was a run. That was actually pretty fast too. Only under two and a half hours. Rare for me. Probably because I play wasn't playing that good, but you know. Two elites, three elites, three elites. We defeated two of them without taking damage. Not bad at all. Oh, so now we're at a two game win streak. Maybe we can keep it up. Haven't had a two game win streak in a long time. Feels good. Four X strike, three X defend, just chilling in there. No, three strikes, four defends. Rested, rested, rest, uh, recalled. Rested. Upgraded, okay. 
Rested. Okay, we got three upgrades in in Act 1. That was really fun, actually. I'm happy with that. Hooray! Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope, uh, hope you're having a good week. And I hope the Spire is being nice to you as much as possible. And I'll see you tomorrow for another Ironclad run. Well, it is also possible that I will be taking a break from my stream for a couple days because I have an exam coming up. I'm not sure if that will be starting tomorrow or not. We'll see. If not, oh, as always, thanks for the support and the viewing. Um, and yeah, have a good evening. <laughs>